Hey everyone, Reese here, and welcome back to Control Alt Reese. Now, you've probably spotted that this is slightly different to my usual filming setup, and the reason for that is because I wanted to take a close look at something that's been sent in by a viewer of the channel, uh, and in fact, a patron of mine, uh, a guy called Was Brown, and it turns out that he is the group art director of Future PLC, who are a uh, magazine publisher. Uh, you've probably heard of them, uh, they publish a magazine called Retro Gamer, uh, which is probably what they're most famous for within this particular uh, community, uh, but they do publish a wide range of magazines uh, covering various hobbies and interests, and they've actually been going uh, since 1985. They started uh, with a magazine called Amstrad Action, uh, and they can actually trace their lineage all the way back to that original company. They are actually the same company, which is, which is fantastic. So he knew that I collected these ST format magazines. I used to read it uh, as a kid. My dad used to buy them from the newsagent occasionally and bring them home. And I still have some of my original magazines and cover discs in my collection. Uh, and he contacted me and said, do you have this particular issue? And I hadn't. In fact, I'd never even seen it before. Uh, and the reason for that is because this was a promotional copy that was given away with brand new Atari ST computers back in 1989. Uh, the date on this is autumn 1989. And as far as he knows, this was one of two different versions, I think. Uh, I think it's what he said to me. Um, which were designed specifically to be given away for free, uh, not only to help brand new Atari ST users get to know their new computers, but also to act as a uh, you know promotional thing for ST Format Magazine. So I'm going to very, very briefly just uh, go over the history of the magazine. Uh, this is something that I'm going to cover in a lot more detail in a future video, and hopefully sit down with Woz and actually have a proper a proper chat because I know he's kind of the uh, the archivist and, and the historian over at, at, at Future as well as being the art director. Um, and he has been collecting a lot of their old magazines and a lot of their old stuff to try to build up uh, a complete collection of all of their output uh, dating back to back to 1985, which is fantastic. Uh, he's also a fellow Atari ST fan, so uh, evidently a man of great taste. But uh, yes, ST Format magazine started back in 1988 as ST Amiga Format, uh, covering both the Atari ST and the Amiga, of course. Uh, that's the complete collection of 13 issues of ST Amiga format magazines before they split into two separate magazines in around the time that this was published, in fact, uh, in autumn 1989. So I guess it's also a good promotion for the new, you know, the new separate machine specific formats as well. So I'll start by taking a look at the cover. Uh, seems like an obvious place to start. Um, this didn't come with a cover disc, it actually says free, two issues of Britain's leading magazine plus disc. Uh, and the big thing that uh, Future Publishing did, and apparently I've read, uh, were actually the first publisher to do this, uh, the thing about all of their magazines that they published in the 80s and the 90s was that they came with a cover disc on the cover. So uh, in fact you can see here where one would have been attached, and I have a bit of co a collection of those as well. Well, I say a bit of a collection, uh, it's actually all of them, um, for ST format and Amiga format, and I have lots of duplicates too. This is uh, one of a few boxes. Uh, so just to, we'll just have a little flick through these and see the kind of stuff that would have been on these discs. So uh, we've got uh, Grav2, Insecticide, these are like public domain games, uh, obviously given away for free. And then you've got demos of stuff like Nigel Man Mansell's Grand Prix, um, some more uh, public domain type games on there as well. Uh, so these were demos of commercial games. I've got a demo of Chaos Engine on there, a complete play playable level of this brilliant arcade blaster. Uh, some of these were actually exclusive to these magazines. Uh, the games developers and publishers would kind of put together exclusive demos, particularly for the bigger magazines like ST Format, uh, Civilization, huge playable demo, uh, Zool. Um, so yeah, um, obviously in the days before the internet, this is how we got hold of our game demos and, and checked out the latest games. They also often give away free complete versions of utilities and games as well, particularly kind of older stuff. Uh, so they were always really great. The very first thing you do before you even read the magazine is uh, rip the, uh, the disc off the cover and, and stick it in the drive and see what's on there. Or at least I certainly did as a kid. Now. Anyway, back onto this cover. So we have our typical Atari ST user here with his MIDI keyboard. Um, of course, we were all bedroom music producers back in the 80s because of those MIDI ports, uh, every single one of us without exception. Uh, we've got some uh, early Atari ST games here. We've got uh, Terrapods and Deep Space 
uh, but mostly uh, kind of oh driller there classic uh, but mostly uh, kind of uh, productivity software and office type stuff he also has his box of st format cover discs and his uh, dot matrix printer there as well so uh, yeah and two uh, two very nice joysticks i wonder what model of joystick they are um is that in there? I'm not quite sure what they are. Let me know down in the comments if you owned either of these classic joysticks. But anyway, so we open it up and typically there's always a big colourful advert just inside the cover. Uh, this one is for US Gold, that well-known US uh, game publisher based in uh, Birmingham, pushing all of their latest releases. So we've got uh, the Indiana Jones RPG uh, point-and-click graphic adventure game, a fantastic game that, released on uh, various different platforms, of course. Uh, we've got Red Lightning, which I haven't heard of. That looks like some kind of military simulation type thing. Uh, face the fierce and power of the Soviet army in an explosive collision between the forces of NATO and the Warsaw Pact. Yes. Um, Demon's Winter, which looks like a dungeon crawler. Uh, we've got Battle Hawks 1942, Combat Flight Simulator, of course. Uh, the Games Summer Edition, uh, which is a athletics uh, track and field type game and forgotten worlds which uh, is a bit of a bit of a classic um i think that's a side scrolling shootery shoot 'em up type i don't know how you describe that platform type game um yeah so on to the next page uh, just quickly flicking through and i'm not going to bore you to death by reading every single word on every single page i just kind of want to give you a general overview of what this was all about so we've got uh, Fiendish Freddy's Big Top of Fun. That's another game that I'm not familiar with. I uh, uh, don't know if that game was released on the Amiga, the ST, IBM Incompatibles, Commodore 64, Amstrad and Spectrum. So yeah, um, let me know down in the comments if that's one of your favourite games. But uh, like I say, there are, I just spotted there are a few on here that uh, definitely am familiar with. Bubble Bubble, one of my favourite games of all time on the ST and in fact on any uh, any platform. Uh, Outrun of course. Um, got some more screenshots. What's this? What's that doing in an Atari ST magazine? So introductory paragraph. Congratulations. Your machine, your choice of machine will not disappoint. Powerful hardware and plenty of sophisticated software to go with it. There's even a magazine to help you get the best out of your new ST. And here it is. In this special edition of ST format you find pages devoted to games, music, graphics, hardware, uh, hints and tips and much more. Monthly edition of SD format stretches to over 100 pages and contains similar sections packed with the latest product details, exclusive reviews and helpful tips. But there's more. SD format comes with a cover disc every month. So obviously I've just uh, had a look at those. And uh, crammed, crammed onto the disc are usable demos of the latest software, utilities and much more. SD format will help you interact with your ST that bit better. That certainly was the case at the time. So published by Future Publishing Limited, originally based in Bath. So, so the first proper article that we have in here, quite rightly, is a getting started kind of guide for the ST. It just goes over the GEM desktop, the keyboard shortcuts, how to interact with GEM using the keyboard rather than the mouse, if that's what you want to do. Uh, it covers all of the ports on the back. I did enjoy this Jargon Busters section here. It covers stuff like CD-ROM and hard drives and laser printers and modems, which, uh, of course, none of us uh, would have had back in the day because they were very expensive and exotic things. Well, certainly not the CD-ROM uh, because that actually was never released for the ST. So, congratulations, your choice of computer won't disappoint you. The ST is unlike any computer you might have used before. And the reason for that is because it has the desktop user interface on it, one of the very first home computers with a point and click interface and not one of the things, not something that uh, most users will have been familiar with. So yeah, it uh, just explains how it works, how the GEM desktop works, a very quick introduction to the, the drop down menus, all of the different screen resolutions and that kind of stuff. So very useful to a brand new user of the ST. And of course the ST came with that famous introduction disc as well with the uh, all of the various mouse based activities and uh, the introductory tour and all that, and that kind of stuff. So we'll just continue onwards. So we have that story time here, and this is a basically a very quick overview of the history of Atari. Uh, in late in late 71, Nolan Bushnell, then a product engineer for an arcade game manufacturer, left his job to start his own company, Syzygy. Now, if you're an Atari fan, you probably know this story, uh, and it's probably uh, outside of the scope 
of this video. Uh, but one thing that uh, I really loved about this page was this awesome setup here with the uh, the Atari laser printer. These are of course very rare nowadays. Uh, 1,379.99. Um, I will look up how much that is in today's money and put that up on screen. But that, uh, I think for 1989, that's uh, that's pretty insane. Um, We've got the colour monitor, the black and white monitor, the external disk drive, and all of the uh, the lovely accessories there. So uh, I think you would have been the envy of uh, all of your friends if you had this kind of setup at home. And uh, yeah, so next page is your typical software publisher advert. Uh, they took out these full page adverts in these magazines. Uh, so we've got new high quality software from Highsoft, Highsoft C, of course, famous C compiler, uh, C interpreter. Uh, to use for the Atari ST if you wanted to program it in C. Of course, the Atari ST came with various uh, basic programming basic programming utilities over its uh, over its lifetime. But uh, if you're a serious developer wanted to work on games and stuff, then C was where it was at. Uh, Tempest 2, which is a screen editor, that you uh, um, edit up to four files at a time with optional word wrap, structure check, cross reference, wildcards, insert and replace strings. Uh, twist allows up to 14 programs in memory at once. Twist at the press of a key from the Twister. Oh, that would be fun to check out, wouldn't it? So that's obviously uh, that's like a multitasking uh, utility for Gem, which of course didn't really support multitasking out of the box. And yeah, so you could actually uh, fill in, you know, order the software directly from here. You could cut this out, stick this in an envelope with a check, and then they would post the software to you. So continue to flick through here, just have the uh, usual competition, win a year's supply of software. Uh, we've got some good questions here, some Atari trivia. Uh, who founded Atari? Jack Trammell, Trammell sorry, uh, Nolan Bushnell or Jack Nicholson? Maximum number of colours the ST can have on screen when running in low resolution. Uh, and in which game do you control a Ferrari? Uh, and if you can answer those three questions and uh, post your answers off to ST format headquarters in Bath, uh, then uh, yeah, you could win a year's supply of software. I'm not really sure what uh, a year's supply of software would consist of, over £500. So yeah, should keep you entertained for a year. Uh, some interesting historic prices on this page, uh, Cavendish distributors. So we have various printers here, all the way from the uh, Super cheap and cheerful Star LC10 Mono at £179. Uh, the colour version, 239 that seems quite reasonable actually. Uh, all the way up to the Atari laser printer, which we saw before, uh, which was over a £1,000. Um, yes, in 1989 money. And of course we've got the classic Atari monitors here, the 124, uh, the 1224, so the monochrome and the colour monitors, uh, the Philips 8833, famous monitor there various disk drives, the computers themselves, uh, so you could buy a uh, Atari 520 STFM with one megabyte of RAM from Cavendish uh, back in autumn of 1989 for £259, uh, which seems very reasonable, you can buy floppy disks from them as well. And uh, this is something that I wanted to uh, have a bit more of a detailed look at, and this is an advert for Micronet, which is an early BBS service, so bear in mind this is 1989, so uh, 30 years ago, uh, 32 years ago in fact, um, and this is an online service. If you subscribed for a year, uh, they would send you a free modem, uh, which would be a 1200 board modem, download software, and you could chat with people, and uh, yeah, basically, essentially a predecessor to the modern internet, if you're not familiar with BBS or uh, bulletin board systems. Um, and I remember it, it's something I remember reading about in the uh, in the ST format magazines back in the day, and thinking, "Wow, you know, it's fantastic that uh, you can plug your computer into the phone line and, and kind of dial up this thing and uh, you know communicate with other people." But uh, my parents quite rise quite rightly uh, didn't uh, didn't let me get on board with that action, uh, as I imagine it probably would have ended up costing a fortune. Uh, but yeah, a really uh, great example of an early uh, dial-up service there. So on the next page, we just have an article all about drawing packages, art packages on the Atari ST. Uh, so, you know, we've got Degas Elite, I think was the, the most famous one that uh, most people used. Uh, we've got uh, Spectrum 512, I think that was another quite popular one, Cyberpaint 2, 
uh, and hyper draw and uh, there is this uh, nice uh, tips and tricks uh, section at the bottom here and uh, my favorite one out of all of these tips and tricks was the about the gem desktop normally the gem desktop will appear with a sickly green color in the background now, it's actually possible to change this color which a lot of people don't know so there were um, desktop uh, utilities included with the Atari ST's language disk that actually let you change the color of the desktop uh, so you didn't blind yourself with that amazing in-your-face green personally I am a fan of the green but uh, I know uh, most people aren't uh, in fact I think you can just see it just peeking through there on the, on this one and uh, yeah an advert for micro pros uh, so this is just a mail order form for their various games that they were pushing at the time uh, just a few examples here, so just looking through here, most of these are not overly well known. We've got Gunship, Pirates, um, Micropro Soccer, that was quite a big uh, quite a big football game back in the day. So we have Virus here, which was uh, of course known as Zarch on the Acorn Archimedes. Um, it's interesting to see that actually that was included on the very first issue of ST Amiga format as well as a demo. So. Uh, yeah, mouse controlled game, that was quite a lot of fun, I had that back in the day. Um, just uh, looking through the rest of this list, we uh, have uh, Rainbow Islands here, which is a really great arcade conversion on the ST. And yeah, same again as with the other adverts in the magazine, you could uh, just cut this out, stick it in an envelope with a cheque, and they would post the games off to you. Uh, so this section is Game Cheats. Um, which they've called Game Busters, uh, and these are cheats for uh, some of the bigger games on the ST. Uh, interesting to see Outrun uh, and Star Glider here, obviously quite big games, Double Dragon. And uh, I noticed that uh, this actually gets cut off, and the reason for that is because we have pages missing. And I wasn't going to point this out, actually, when I, when I sort of first flicked through this magazine and I was first sort of putting this video together in my head, because uh, I thought it might seem a bit ungrateful, but actually it uh, it does give me an opportunity to talk about something that uh, was quite big and quite well known back in the day with these magazines, and that was the centre pull-out poster. Uh, quite a lot of these old computer and gaming magazines had, a, you know, the, the centre pull-out was a poster of a, a game advert or something like that. I'm not quite sure what it would have been in this, probably a, a quick reference thing for the ST or something like that, I'm guessing. Uh, but if you do own this, particular issue um, I'd love to know it'd be interesting to see what I'm missing out on obviously there's the rest of this game busters thing which I guess continued on to the next page uh, then there would have been a poster and probably an advert on the back of that uh, but yeah it's uh, just a, an interesting little uh, little piece of history there so just moving quickly along the next thing that we have is this advert for Virgin Games uh, just their latest releases uh, I love this old classic Virgin Games logo here that's uh, that's quite cool uh, so we have uh, Silkworm that's uh, quite a, a classic on the ST uh, Scrabble Deluxe Shinobi in fact they're all, uh, all quite well known quite big titles as was the uh, kind of style for Virgin at the time uh, coming soon we've got Ninja Warriors Double Dragon 2 and Continental Circus and uh, yeah so uh, all titles 1999 each and uh, just uh, yeah, it's a good uh, good lineup of Atari ST games there. So these are the pages that I used to love, really sort of uh, flicking through and and, and really um, spending my time on when I was a kid. Oddly enough, not the game reviews and the and the stories and that kind of stuff, but uh, these adverts for all these weird bits of hardware that you could buy for your ST. So we have uh, you know got the typical. Uh, sampler studio for uh, all the uh, music production types that were buying the ST at the time. Uh, the track master, which is uh, blah, 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 blah. what is that? Hmm, is that uh, perhaps a piracy type thing? Or something to do with disc duplication? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if you know what that particular piece of hardware was for. Um, but yeah, so we've got the one megabyte internal drive upgrade. So that would have been a um, double-sided high-density drive, uh, 1.4 meg, um, and that would have come uh, place internal 500k drive with a full 1 meg unit. Or is that an upgrade from a 360k to a 720k, and they're actually just trying to round the numbers up and, and pull the wool over our eyes a bit. Um, I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, we've got an EEPROM board, that's in the cartridge area. 
uh, useful. I know these have been used for diagnostic utilities and that kind of stuff, but uh, obviously more for kind of uh, perhaps software and hardware development, that kind of thing. Uh, a barcode reader, I suppose if you're using the ST in uh, like a point of sale kind of setup um, in a shop, that kind of thing. Uh, we've got a uh, video cable, one metre long, open-ended. The uh, video output on the ST was full RGB, so you could put a, a SCART cable or whatever you want onto the end of that. Make your own video cable, it's quite useful. Uh, disk drive lead, uh, disk drive socket. Um, the total MIDI music package, which includes a keytar of all things, um, obviously ST owners being keen keytar players back in the 80s. Yeah, I would have loved to have owned one of those back in the day. That's, uh, that's a, quite an impressive piece of kit, isn't it? And uh, yeah, just moving on to the second page. So we have a mouse, um, of course, high quality direct replacement mouse, obviously made by Genius. So I imagine that would have been quite high quality. Uh, external floppy drives, switch boxes, ST Timekeeper, real-time clock. Obviously, there wasn't really all that much release that actually used the cartridge port uh, on the ST. Uh, but we do have two good examples on this page, one of them being this real-time clock. Uh, the Atari ST didn't have a real-time clock, so the time was just reset back to 1985 every time you switched it on. So if you did a lot of work with uh, documents and files and stuff where you wanted the date on those files to be accurate, obviously it was quite important to have a real-time clock, otherwise you'd have to set the time on the computer every single time it booted up, uh, which it wasn't. that wasn't unusual for computers of the time. Uh, it just meant that you could have that option if you were willing to pay for it. The other thing that plugged into the cartridge port that was quite popular back in the 80s and the 90s was a hand scanner, of course. Um, and I did very briefly feature one of these in one of my projects and pickups videos a while back. And it's something that I do want to revisit at some point uh, so yes, the uh, hand scanner, which was incredibly slow, uh, usually black and white. And uh, yeah, this one comes with the software, uh, save images, scan images and text into the ST. Uh, and it comes complete with the software for $189.99. Uh, oh, and OCR software as well, which based on my experience, uh, that early OCR, OCR software was quite bad. Uh, OCR being optical character recognition of course, so you scan in text and it would turn it from an image into actual text which you could edit. Uh, of course still a thing today but that uh, happens pretty much in real time these days on a device that fits in your pocket. So yes, the uh, inevitable march of technology. So a very basic advert here for a company called Arna Limited, never heard of those, based in Peterborough. Uh, and these are a uh, word processor software and a database software. Um, quite popular that uh, these these small businesses writing and releasing their own software and then advertising it in the magazines and, and attempting to sell it. And I'm sure a lot of small businesses will probably run on this very software back in the day. So we also have, uh, oh, I've just spotted on this page, we've got uh, Tripatron. So this is, this is non-game, non-business uh, software. Uh, that they've mentioned just a few other interesting things that you can do with your ST. Uh, the Tripatron by Llamasoft, um, of course Jeff Minter, very famous Atari ST programmer, still going to today, still making games today, uh, including some uh, quite cool and interesting VR games for uh, for modern consoles and stuff. Um, loved his stuff back in the day, uh, Llamatron and uh, Revenge of the Mutant Camels and that, that kind of stuff. And then down the side here, uh, in that vein, we have uh, case spread Spread 3, uh, quite popular spreadsheet software, uh, data fax, computerized file fax, you can store names and addresses, so that's the basic phone book software, Superbase Pro, complete database software, uh, and personal tax planner, because uh, lots of people bought these computers, um, you know, intending to use them to manage their own finances and whatnot at home back in those days. So just uh, mention here of some of the various programming uh, environments that were available for the ST, uh, software development tools. Uh, so you've got BASIC, of course, uh, Power Basic, GFA Basic. GFA Basic was quite a big one for writing games uh, and also public domain. A lot of public domain software was written in GFA Basic, I remember back in the day. 
C, C interpreters, of course. Assembly language, uh, Highsoft DevPack ST, if you want to program in uh, 68000 Assembler on the ST, uh, the Motorola 68000 CPU, of course. So obviously, uh, kind of getting towards the end now, but uh, one, one thing that is kind of emerging is that uh, this covers a really good spread of you know, Atari ST users. We've got some music stuff in here, we've got some office stuff, uh, we've got some home accounting and uh, database and that kind of stuff in there, uh, programming stuff. So whatever you bought the computer for, uh, there's something in this magazine to cater to you, which is really cool. It's obviously very well thought out. Uh, very good of them to cover all of the various use cases of this machine. So it's talking about public domain software. So public domain software, something I mentioned a few times uh, in this in this video so far. Uh, public domain software is software that was free, so it was in the public domain, a lot like uh, kind of open source stuff nowadays, um, although the source code wasn't available for public domain stuff typically. Um, a lot of it was like uh, donationware, so if you enjoyed using the software you could send off a cheque or some cash or whatever to the author of said software to show your appreciation, but I don't think there was any obligation to do that. Uh, people just wrote this stuff out of the goodness of their own hearts or perhaps to promote the other yeah, more commercial, commercial software that they were writing. Uh, and you know, lots of good public domain tools. That's probably good, probably a good uh, topic for a future video. In fact, so <clears throat> anyway, yes, I was talking about programming a second ago, and uh, Stoss. You may be familiar with Stoss, which is the game creation uh, software for the ST. Uh, there was a version called Amos, which was released on the Amiga, which is quite famous as well. And uh, this is uh, just your. Uh, typical basic based game creation software but the cool thing about Stoss is it came with uh, all sorts of interesting things like a, a music editor and a sprite editor uh, and animation and there were various somewhat complete versions of Stoss included on various SD format cover discs over the years as well uh, which uh, I used to enjoy playing with as a kid mainly mainly the uh, animation things and the music things rather than uh, actually attempting to write games but yeah big uh, big uh, game development and of course you had the Stoss compiler which could compile uh, basic games into I think I could actually compile them certainly more efficient format I don't know if they actually compiled them into proper proper assembly but um, yeah so you could compile your uh, basic games and uh, make them run even faster and yet again how do you order it by sending a check off to Mandarin software in the post they were based in Ellesmere Port South Wirral so there you go uh, I have some friends up that way in fact so I'm sure they'll be pleased to see that so finally, another article here, Expanding Horizons, which is all about various hardware add-ons for the ST. So we have the Replay 4 sound sampler, uh, which here is being marketed towards uh, game programmers. Uh, it was made by Microdeal, of course, big publisher back in the day. Uh, RoboKit, which was the... Uh, cartridge port based uh, robotics kit for the ST so you could use that to uh, control your own robots and, and like home automation stuff and that kind of stuff so that was a really cool piece of hardware uh, one of the few things that actually used the cartridge port as well other than those uh, real-time clocks and hand scanners as I mentioned before uh, this is a touchscreen for the ST you know, not something that was unique to the ST. I think IBM made a touchscreen a few years before this, and obviously, if you were using it in a kind of uh, point of sale environment or something like that, um, quite a handy, handy piece of kit. Uh, I noticed that's four hundred and fifty-eight pounds eighty-five, which is more than double the cost of the actual computer itself. Uh, so, pretty amazing how that technology has uh, advanced over the years. I imagine there probably weren't. Yeah, transparent conductive layer sits in front of the monitor. When you press the screen, signals are sent to the computer. I know there were a few different types of these early touch screens, some that actually worked on touch, so you actually physically touch the screen, and some that had like a laser type arrangement as well that detected where the beam was broken. Uh, it looks like this is uh, this is the uh, the first kind, uh, similar to the uh, to a modern touch screen. So we have Vidi here, Rombo Productions, grabbing everyday images for storage inside the computer, or video digitizer, okie dokie, so uh, yeah, plug your uh, VCR or whatever into your ST and capture uh, video footage, uh, pictures in low resolution, uh, low resolution 16 colour or 16 shades of grey, uh, fantastic. Um, Spectre, Spectre 128, if your ST wasn't enough to be getting on with, this device makes it possible to emulate the Apple Macintosh, so there you go, hardware Apple Mac emulator. Uh, do note that for serious use the emulator requires a hard drive and one megabyte of RAM, not quite sure what that includes, uh, perhaps that plugs into the cartridge port. 
So good is the emulation that Mac software runs faster on the ST than it does on a Mac Plus. So there you go. Uh, that's PC speed, that's a PC uh, internal upgrade lets your ST run PC software four times faster than a 4.77 MHz XT, so that's a hardware PC emulator that fits inside the ST. Uh, I imagine that probably includes a CPU uh, four times faster, it's probably 286, maybe 286 or 386 based. Um, yeah, memory upgrades, um, just a little uh, thing about there, how you can upgrade the ST to a maximum of four megabytes of RAM. Uh, we have a hand, another hand scanner here, and this under the boardwalk looks like it is to do with modems, bulletin board systems. Indeed, it is. Uh, just four things are necessary: computer, a modem, software, and a BT phone socket. Nothing particularly mysterious about communication. So your computer transmits information down and receives data from the telephone line. Yada yada. So yeah, even back in 1989, people were talking about getting online and connecting and communicating with other computers. So finally, we just have an advert here for uh, KSpread 3, Kuma Software, of course, KSpread 3 and KGraph 3, Business Graphics, uh, KSpread being one of the early spreadsheet packages, which was available on the ST. Um, I remember my dad actually using that for uh, various business uses on our ST at home. Um, I actually should have mentioned, actually, at the beginning of the video that this is my original childhood Atari STE, which we got in 1991. Uh, so yeah, this is the actual machine that I was using uh, and running a lot of this stuff on back in the day. So that's just an advert for GFA, uh, made by Data Media UK, so you could send off on that and buy the GFA basic programming environment and all the basic, uh, all this stuff that kind of plugs into it, and offers various uh, add-ons and things to allow you to develop your software in GFA basic. Read all the bits the manuals try to hide, so this is uh, stuff how to use an ST with a single disk drive, uh, stuff like swapping between the two floppies and copying files from one to the other, which is perhaps not well known. Um, yeah, just a few tips and tricks for new users of the ST, uh, as per earlier in the magazine. So uh, some useful stuff in there. Oh, this page also has a list of file extensions here as well, which I imagine is very useful. Um, the uh, PRG, of course, being the executable format on the ST. So finally, just flick through to the very last page, uh, and this is just a continuation of that previous uh, article. How to rename a file? I'm not quite sure why that uh, gets such uh, gets like a half a page. Uh, a gem is a tosser. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> How to transfer files between the ST and the PC. Of course, the Atari ST uses PC formatted disks, so no problems there. Uh, copying files between the two operating systems. And finally, just a couple of adverts. Uh, we have uh, an advert for Psygnosis. Uh, Psygnosis games at the time. So we've got Menace, we've got Tetris, and we've got Baal. Uh, all the various reviews there. So, uh, yes before the days of Lemmings, although I might, so I imagine they would have been uh, pushing that if that was the case. And finally, just my favourite thing about this, or one of my favourite things, is this really cool full page advert for Xenon 2, which has obviously got the box at heart, uh, and a uh, quite an enthusiastic description of the game there. Uh, so yeah, famous Bitmap Brothers game, a uh, big system seller on the ST and the Amiga, uh, one of my favourites. Uh, and just, uh, yeah, just uh, kind of rounding off the whole thing quite nicely. So thank you very much for watching and thank you for sticking with me if you've made it to this point. I hope you enjoyed this very quick look through this magazine. Uh, as I said, in future, I am going to be putting together a video uh, just on the, you know, the history of future publishing and of SD format in, in particular. Uh, but yeah, so uh, hopefully that's, uh, hopefully that was a very interesting look into British computer magazines of the 80s and the 90s, and specifically ST format. So thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again next time.